Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Yeah, been a while since I've done my last movie review, but I also did my Blu-ray review to join. But, of course, continuing on with all these commercial breaks that I had to find online, you know, to fix, you know, editing out everything and putting it all together, fixing the audio, you name it, <laughs> as usual. And also keeping up the pace. And of course, uh, my sister's birthday was during this week too. We celebrated with the family. So it was all fun. This week, I did actually bought something on Amazon. I was using my gift card that I was saving from my birthday that my dad actually gave me. It was only like $66 that I had in my gift card balance that I used. I was actually making a lot of hard decisions to pick up which movie that I want to get for the right price because I was like browsing here and there and see how this will cover it. I know there's been new titles coming up too and granted though I really wish I could pick them up but the prices are going insane at the moment and I know there are some prices that are actually quite excellent. I mean because they're going pretty small too for the catalog titles I want to pick up. So I, I realized that too. But I wanted to get some other titles that will be good enough to own if the sooner or later, you know, they'll be pretty hard to find and yeah, you know, probably shit out of luck. Anyway. Well, I only ordered four movies on Amazon. I did actually bought uh, two more films at Walmart uh, the other day because I actually got uh, $25 at the joint. But I hope I will continue to find some more titles uh, pretty soon. And I hope that, because we're already going to be in the summer, now that we're in June, it's getting really hot in here. I mean, that's why I'm putting my air conditioner on. That now I can actually uh, be able to get a 4K TV if we're lucky. And hopefully, I'll, I'll get some more 4K movies that I'll find. <laughs> okay, well, keep this in mind. Um, I'm going to do a movie review. It's a classic uh, action film that came out in 1985. And it stars none other than the big muscle bound uh, from Austria. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. The one who says... I'll be back. Yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger in his terrific, successful, um, badass action movie, Commando. This is the director's cut release on Blu-ray. And you may have noticed right here, because you can see him holding the, the rocket launcher. You know, dressing up and everything. You can see these two uh, logos on each side. That's because this is a UK import that I found on Amazon for like $18.99 free shipping, so it came pretty fast. This is not going to be the only import that I picked up because I just picked up another Schwarzenegger film and you're going to be ready for it uh, when I do my review later. And I'll show you that. Now the main reason why I got this though was because this was the only release I could find that's available. They did actually release the director's cut as a Best Buy exclusive that was on a steel book back in 2015. So this would have celebrated its 30th anniversary at the time. Unfortunately though, it was, it was out of print, it was very hard to find, and I blew my chances on getting this movie. So now we were stuck with these uh, theatrical cuts that they put out since 2008 that only had just the trailer, so it's bare bones. But this one does have features, and not only does it have the director's cut to join in, they also have the theatrical cuts as well. and does have commentary by director Mark L. Lester. 
yes, for both theatrical and his cut. Um, pure action featurettes where you get to see um, some of the people uh, behind the movie. You know, you got Ray Dodd Sean, you got Vernon Wells, you know, Mark L. Lesser, of course. Um, we have Stephen D. Souza. Yeah, he's the writer of the movie. Yeah, that explains all the quotable lines of dialogue with some badass action scenes <laughs> and what was other stuff. And there's also let off some steam featurette just to join in and deleted scenes. Just nearly three minutes of it. really cool. And here's some proof here that it's not a Region B release. Because I'm going to show you right now, if you can see it up close. Um, it's actually a Region Free Blu-ray. So you can see the ABC at the bottom, you know, next to those two um, ratings uh, logos. <laughs> and it comes in this gorgeous uh, Blu-ray case, which makes you wonder, folks, I wish Americans had gave us cases like that, because we're stuck with Eagle Box cases. And this is thick layer, and it's so much better to hold. Yeah. Anyway, so I'm happy they have this. Now, the story is simple. It's about a retired uh, United States Special Force uh, Colonel, you know, John Matrix, that's his name, who just wants to spend time with his daughter at, at his um, own home in the mountains when all of a sudden his daughter gets kidnapped by a couple of bad guys um, that's led by President Arias yeah, the the day, yeah. and they had to do exactly what they say for the special uh, operations that he's been doing with his uh, former superior Major General Franklin Kirby yeah. so he has like 11 hours to uh, do his mission but Apparently he's going to spend 11 hours trying to save his daughter uh, with the help of Cindy, you know, played by Ray Don Sean. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it may be silly, over the top. Yes, it's unrealistic. I get it. But that's what makes this movie fun. I mean, this was the movie that actually made Arnold Schwarzenegger a star. After uh, his successes with films like the Conan movies, and The Terminator. And he's done other films to join before and after. But of course, it will later go on with other films to follow, including uh, Predator. <laughs> now that's my favorite uh, Schwarzenegger film. This is also another favorite of mine too. And that's what I love about it. Because he's just so badass. And the fact that he was the governor <laughs> of California, because I'm a, from California myself, so it's really cool. Yeah. And because the movie is shot in California, by the way. That's why you recognize the Sherman Oaks Galleria in those scenes. Yeah. Yeah. So all I can say is, let's party. <laughs> all right. But let's begin with this review. It stars Arnold Schwarzenegger, Radon Sean, Alicia Milano, you may remember her as the cute and very sweet Samantha, yeah, Tony's daughter in the TV show Who's the Boss. She went on to play a hottie, yeah, one of the riches in Charm that was on the WB. Yeah, great actress. Um, she was a teen idol too. You know, she even had her own music videos, and she's a singer and all, and dancer. She even did her own exercise uh, video. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Uh, Dana Dea, you always remember him from other films too, including The Adams Family, um, Dick, and he even made appearances on Cheers. Yeah. Uh, Vernon Wells, of course, from uh, Mad Max 2. The Road Warrior and Weird Science also came out the same year as this. James Olsen, 
uh, David Patrick Kelly, yes, from The Warriors and Dreamscape. He was also in The Crow on Subwaters. Bill Duke, yes, who later went on to play Mac. You know, one of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, Butch, is uh, rescue team in the movie Predator. So it was really nice to see him playing a villain. Uh, and I know he went on to do other films and he also directed some movies too. Uh, Drew Snyder, uh, Michael Delano, Chelsea Field, yes, the wonderful, beautiful actress uh, Chelsea Field went on to do films like um, Masters of the Universe with Dolph Lundgren. Uh, she also went on to do the movie uh, The Last Boy Scout with Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans. And Bill Paxton, yes, who makes a cameo appearance in the movie as the Incepted Officer. <laughs> so it was nice to see him. Yeah. It is produced by Joe Silver, yes, who, of course, went on to do a lot of big with action movies and other stuff. Yeah, with his production company, Silver Pictures. Yeah, it's written by Stephen E. D'Souza, yes, who went on to write um, Die Hard, among other films. Yeah, he's joining in with Joseph Lowe III and Matthew Wiseman, and it's directed by Mark L. Lester, the same director who gave us Class of 1984, along with Firestarter, yeah, the Stephen King adaptation yeah, with Drew Barrymore. And he also went on to do films like uh, Showdown in Little Tokyo with Dolph Lundgren and Brandon Lee. Yeah, excellent director. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention the Blu-ray does work on my 4K Blu-ray player from Sony, along with my other Blu-ray player. So I had to test them out to see if it works. I'm happy for that because the transfer is incredibly stunningly beautiful. And the sound is totally robust right there. Just awesome. Now, let's get right to it. The movie begins when we meet a retired colonel, John Matrix, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who lives at a secured mountain home uh, with um, his young daughter, uh, Jenny, played by Alicia Milano, which they just spend time together, having those wonderful moments you know, like uh, teaching him how to fight karate, uh, teaching her how to fight karate. You know, they had some ice cream together. They're, they ride on a horse. They swim. They do all these fun activities. Um, until he was being informed by his former superior, Major General Franklin Kirby, as played by uh, James Olson, that all of the other members of his former unit had been murdered by unknown mercenaries that's run by a Green Beret uh, named Cook, played by Bill Duke, you know, joined by all of the other men, and they had to work together with um, a South American former dictator, um, President Arias, who's played by Dan Dea. Of course, one of the mercenaries that they murdered, um, joined in by Captain Bennett, who's an Australian ex-member of Matrix Team that's been discharged for excessive violence. He's played by Bernan Wells. He's actually alive and well. This was just part of a trick that they have to pull for their pan, from their plan. So they wound up attacking the Matrix. They kidnap his daughter. While trying to accept them, Matrix was overpowered and abducted by them telling them to do uh, a special operated um, task that he wanted to do, you know, just to stop all that. Because, of course, you know, in the past, with all these uh, special operative uh, missions uh, formed by Kirby, you know, he has to go to, like, several countries, which leads to, you know, terrorism and all this other wars going around. But anyway, Arius blackmails uh, Matrix into carrying out a political assassination in his home country of Valverde, which he wishes to lead a military coup, you know, forming all of the military soldiers around. With Jenny on the line, uh, Matrix reluctantly accepts the demand, but not before killing Diaz, 
or refusing to cooperate with his men. And so that's where there was a chase scene. They, they took out all the engine parts. They already killed uh, Major Six men around trying to protect her. And at, at this point on, he went all the way steep down to the hill, driving around to stop these two before he got caught. Yeah, with Bennett joining in. And that's where they assigned him to, to go on board to Valverde on a plane uh, with uh, his guard Henrius, who's played by Charles Meshack. Yeah, I forgot to mention his name on the current <laughs> the cast. Um, which, of course, you also meet Sully, played by David Patrick Kelly. <laughs> And I know this was like after, you know, he was about to be on board and he just says, I'll be back, Bennett. And <laughs> Bennett says, you'll be ready, John. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sully so just started to bring some humor that he's going to be on his way to California because he's making a deal with his envier at the shopping mall, which is Sherman Oaks Galleria. We're going to get to that. Uh, but this is where he said that funny line. You're very funny, uh, Sully. That's why I'm going to kill you last. So once he's on board on plane, that's where you meet this beautiful uh, brunette stewardess, uh, played by Chelsea Fields. And um, anyway, he actually kills his guard, just knocks him out cold and just broke his neck. And <laughs> he, he was informing her that... Um, how many hours that the plane's going to land? And it was going to be 11 hours. And he said to her, Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. So then he escapes, just fooled her, saying that I have air sick, just before <laughs> um, the airplane was about ready to abort. Yeah, it's the Western Airlines. He escapes uh, directly into the cargo area. He saw a dog in the cage. And got out of there as soon as he came, just right when it was boarding. He fell directly into the swamp. And then he got out and sets his watch to 11 hours. So that way he'll be on his way to stop Sully. But we meet um, Cindy, who's played by Wei Don Sean. Who was an off-duty flight attendant. Instructing her to follow Sully to Sherman Oaks Galleria. But Cindy first assumes that Matrix might be a madman. So that's why, you know, he decided to have uh, Cindy follow her, him you know, directly from her car. Yeah, he, he just ripped off the seat so he could hide. And once they were there, um, Sully was going into the restaurant, you know, trying to make deals with this um, arm dealer, get what he needs, and... And then he was ready to um, go directly into the phone booth. Yeah, that's when uh, Sully just spotted uh, Matrix. Uh, just when Cindy was going to fool him. And yes, all the, the security guards came by. There's like so many of them. Because Cindy was the one that contacted them. And they went around attacking the Matrix. Just when uh, Matrix was about to go after Sully right away. Yeah, there was like a big chase scene, there was a shootout, you know, he took out all these guards, you know, one of them got shot and killed, and, you know, the arm dealer got killed as well, and it, it was like madness, and, and then he was like swinging around that balloon bind just to, to go straight at Sully, just when he took out the, uh, just when he went inside the elevator, and then he escapes uh, along with Matrix, and and Cindy, they, they drove off, there's a chase scene around while he was driving his yellow Porsche yeah them in, in the red car they go all the way straight into the cliff they crash together and now um, that's when the <laughs> Matrix took uh, Sully's uh, leg was and ready to drop him all the way down to the cliff yeah this is where he says the line what's important is gravity do you remember when I promised that I'm going to kill you last? And he says, Yeah, yeah, that's right, you did! And then he says, I lied. Dropped him and he fell all the way down into the cliff. 
then Cindy says, we have no car. And then he steals uh, Sully's uh, yellow Porsche. Yeah, he also uh, took out the hotel key from his jacket. And then he says, now I do. <laughs> and he flipped them back uh, in his place. And then Cindy says, what did you do with Sully? And he says, I let him go. <laughs> so they drove off to the hotel. That's when uh, Cook arrives uh, in his car. Well, there was a bit of a trick on here where um, Cindy was uh, dressed up, acting like, you know, Sully was uh, his girlfriend, you know, just making love. He was in the shower. But then that's where we had this brutal fight scene between Matrix and Cook. And yeah, we even get the line, You scared, motherfucker? Well, you should be, because this Green Beret is going to kick your big ass. And he says, I eat Green Berets for breakfast. And right now, I'm very hungry! With all these punching and kicking sounds. And <laughs> and Sydney was like screaming. And she was saying, I can't believe this macho bullshit. <laughs> These guys eat too much red meat. And during the fight scene, I mean, yeah, and even that, uh, that one shot too, when he was about to pull out the gun, uh, Cook. And this is where he says, fuck you, asshole. Went out of bullets, and then he says, fuck you, asshole. And punches him, and I'm right in front of the uh, the couple uh, next to the bedroom. Yeah, all naked, having sex. And then after the fight ends, uh, Cook was killed. Yeah, one of the pieces went straight into uh, his heart. And now uh, he steals um, the card and all the information. So they had to drive all the way to the, the warehouse. And that's where they found out that his daughter is being captive in an island somewhere um, at Arius' villa. So once he'll be on his way, he has to get everything set up by going to a army surplus store, just breaking in and taking out all the utilities that he need to prepare before he got caught by the police. But Sydney, on the other hand, came to the rescue and and bailed him out by using the rocket launcher. <laughs> Accidentally shoot it backwards until she finally got it right. <laughs> but of course, you know, Matrix uh, said just when he got out of the police truck by these two guys, um, says, "How do you learn how to do that?" She says, "I read the instructions." <laughs> So now they're about to be on board on this um, canoe plane, which they had trouble starting it already before the shootout too. And yes, and Matrix took them down with the machine gun. And now they're about to be on their way to Alberta, even though um, they were trying to make contact with uh, an accepted officer that's played by Bill Paxton in his tiny cameo role to see if, if they can get information from Kirby so that way they'll they'll be on their way so yes uh, Matrix is a one-man army he's got it all set he puts on war paints you know he puts on the suit yeah with the grenades yeah, he has the rocket launchers the machine guns uh, everything all set up so now he can take down all of Ari's uh, men, the soldiers around, you know, which it came into like a brutal fight scene around, you know, throwing all these grenades and rocket launchers, you know, lots of explosions around. And and if you saw the director's cut, uh, there's an extended scene of the, um, the tool shed, you know, where he took out a rake and stabs one soldier. The next, he took out two soul blades. Yeah, one he sculpted the, the other soldier, then he sculpted the next one, caught on his neck, and blood squirts out. And after that, he took out an axe and stabs this one soldier in the nuts and the other soldier by chopping off his arm. <laughs> he did got shot, but he was trying to get away from them all, and, and then he was trying his way to find uh, where Jenny's headed. While well, Jenny, still in the room, locked up, uh, found a way to escape. Because now, uh, 
Arias just had a phone call that um, his guard um, was killed. Yeah, they just took him out, so now they're they have Bennett to to go kill Jenny right away. Meanwhile, you know, Matrix was about to find her, and so continue on with the battle between him and uh, Arias. You know, the machine gun battle, and finally got him. But the best part of all was the final climax between him and Bennett. Yes, and it was a knife fight. Let's party. <laughs> so he let Jenny go, and that's where they all fight together. You know, with punches and kicking and all. A lot of blood and all. And, and then straight inside this, uh, this basement um, that has all these uh, air conditioning and all. And steam. <laughs> and there's even that line at the end where Bennett says, I'm not going to shoot you uh, between the eyes. I'm going to shoot you between your balls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he pulled out the gun and then Matrix just took out um, the tube and just threw straight into his chest. And that's where all the steam came out. And that's where he says the line, Let off some steam, Bennett. There's a lot of outtakes on that line too. But this one was just right. So now both uh, Matrix and Jenny are together. They finally escape, uh, and Kirby came right away to perform that he wanted back on his team. But this was his last, and he doesn't want to go back anymore. Um, all he, what matters is to be with his daughter, and of course he's joining with Cindy on their way. So the movie ends. <laughs> yeah, because. The only thing that's left for Kirby is just bodies. <laughs> Such an awesome movie, no doubt. I mean, of course, it's crazy, it's silly, but that's what you expect from a popcorn movie. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger is just awesome, no doubt. I love his uh, funny lines of dialogue, I laugh. That's the whole purpose of the whole character, is that he really wants to find his daughter to be safe, so they she won't get killed by these bad guys. I mean, this is basically um, his taken. You know, long before Liam Neeson did his. <laughs> um, but there's a bit of Rambo in there too. I mean, yeah, they may say it's a Rambo clone, but hey, it's 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 awesome that it is <laughs> in a way. Because I love Rambo too. I mean, I love all four of, of the Stallone films that he did, except for the last one. That he did, but nevertheless. But it really shows that he can do anything. Because he's a one-man army. Um, as for the rest of the actors, yeah, Ray Don Chan, yeah, very beautiful and funny too. <laughs> I mean, even though, you know, she gets involved in this whole madness happening, but that's the whole point. Um, as for the rest of the other actors, I mean, yes, uh, David Patrick Kelly is just, uh, well, crazy. Got thrown off the cliff. So, anyway, there's also uh, Dana Dea, who is excellent, uh, portraying as a South American, uh, you know, Spanish dictator. Um, he actually played him very well too. I mean, with his accent, uh, it really shows he can do that. Um, Bernard Wells, I mean, yeah, the way he was portrayed, I mean, you may think he's a homosexual. Because apparently, as explained in the, the featurette, he says that, you know, he's Freddie Mercury on steroids. <laughs> and the fact that, you know, I love him, but I want to kill him. <laughs> so this, this is the, uh, the idea here. <laughs> Crazy. Um, Alisa Milano, though, um, very beautiful at the time. I mean, she was very young at that age. I mean, I love those moments. I mean, which is at the opening credits uh, between her and her father, you know, Matrix. I mean, that alone really shows that he really cares. And of course, I mean, Schwarzenegger was totally charismatic too. And, you know, a likable guy. I mean, you really care for him. 
And um, the action scenes in the movie too. I mean, yeah, there's like there's like tons of them in the film. It's it's definitely fast paced. Um, a lot of blood squibs, a lot of practical effects that they use. I mean, all done in a nine million budget. I mean, that's incredible for that budget alone. Very big, and it was a huge success. Surprisingly, it was. It made fifty-seven point five uh, box office in the U.S. and worldwide. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, it's, it's also considered to be one of his best films too. Anyway, and I love it. It's exactly what an action film should be. And this was also uh, nominated for a Saturn Award for Best Special Effects. So eventually got lost to uh, Back to the Future. But that's okay, because I love Back to the Future. Uh, the score was done by James Horner. Excellent score. I mean, definitely keeps uh, your adrenaline pumping. Does definitely has a classic 80s feel to it. The synthesizers and all. Uh, but most of all, it did have the song at the end credits called uh, We Fight for Love, uh, done by uh, the Power Station. Yeah, this was uh, sort of a, uh, a short-lived type of uh, band which had Robert Palmer to join, along with the other members of Duran Duran and, and stuff. So that's really cool. You know, somewhere, somehow, somewhere. We fight for love. Yeah, that song. It's terrific. They shot this in California and several areas. I mean, it's great to see the the Sherman Oaks Galleria because that's the same place where they shot movies like, you know, Fast Times at Richmond High, Chopping Mall, among others. You know, before the mall, well, because of the Norfolk earthquake, you know, it it got several damages, but and then they had to remodel it and fix it and now they have to make it into an open air mall and that's how it is today yeah, shame I know but it was the perfect place to, to shoot uh, a lot of movies at a shopping mall yeah I mean especially when you have Arnold uh, taking down you know all these uh, all these uh, security guards and everything and yeah, and I think he did his own stunts, too, in, in the movie. That that was really surprising to see that shot. Yeah. I mean, he really did took the risk. Um, I know they uh, had to change uh, from the original script because they had to focus on the Ir Israel soldier, but then I know they had to go for Schwarzenegger to play the part. And I know they actually shot the... Again, the mall um, for six days, you know, after 9 p.m. But you notice that um, this was actually shot like I think this happened back in May of '85, which this was the time I was born. I was a baby because I noticed they were playing the movie Gotcha at the Pacific Theaters, yeah, which is now gone, sadly. I know, but uh, they had the Pacific uh, Four Theaters, and you can see the the marquee on there swinging around. Um, anyway, and you can see May Company, which is now Robinson's May, which is now, of course, May Macy's and all. Yeah. And all these other stores. That, you know. Okay. But it's fun. Um, awesome action movie. It's what you expect. Anyway, that's Commando, and I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.